So what happens when a twiddler doesn't twiddle? Well, you may end up ranking in AI overviews, even with the manual action. I'm going to be covering that topic and more today on the show. But before I get started, make sure you subscribe to my channel to make sure that you don't miss any future videos. I appreciate it. Okay, let's get started. So today, I've got a good one. Uh, it's something I've been thinking about for a while now because I've seen it in the wild. Um, Lily Ray actually shared about it, and then I retweeted about that and shared my experiences with it. Um, and I'm going to be covering that topic today. And the name of my post is The Twiddler That Didn't Twiddle, How to Track Clicks and Click-Through Rate for Google's AI Overviews. But you need a manual action, right? So what is that all about? So um, as I start the post, um, I explain, yes, you read that correctly. I mean, everybody's been trying to get data for AI overviews ever since they launched. Google and Google Search Console, unfortunately, combines all of the data. Um, so you actually can't really identify, you know, clicks and click through rate and everything for AI overviews versus uh, traditional listings in the 10 blue links, including featured snippets. So it's, it's very murky and muddy. Um, I wrote a whole post on Search Engine Roundtable about that topic as I dug in and couldn't really figure anything out. And I think that's exactly the way Google wants it to be, by the way. So let's hop into the post. So first, I talk about a site that has a manual action that I've been analyzing. And I started uh, digging in and seeing that the section that had a manual action actually was still getting a decent amount of traffic. So when I went into Google Search Console, I noticed something that looked like this, which was uh, number one rankings for the queries. And I was like, okay, well, the directory's pretty much been de-indexed, and I'll cover more about that in a minute. Um, so how is that happening? And then it hit me. I'm like, oh, they may be ranking in AIOs, right, in AI overviews. So I checked that out, and that's actually what was happening. So there's a loophole right now with Google where if you have a manual action, um, let's say for a directory, let's say it was site reputation abuse or something, um, basically Google's going to demote or remove your listings from the traditional search results in the 10 blue links. But in the, with the loophole, you can rank in AI overviews. So, which is really ironic, right? Because those are prominently placed. Um, it's technically the number one ranking because it's the block, the AIO block that ranks. Um, and you can still get traffic that way. So a few weeks ago, Lily Ray shared that she was seeing sites with manual actions appear in AI overviews. And uh, then it was not long after that that I actually had my own situation where I saw sites ranking in AI overviews that also had manual actions that were not ranking in the 10 blue links. So I retweeted um, Lily and just provided some additional information there. And it makes no sense at all that this is going on. So uh, after that, I covered uh, the Twiddler that didn't twiddle, right? So if you're not familiar with Twiddlers, I provide a link here to Marie Haynes, who wrote a whole post about it, really good post explaining everything. Uh, so basically, a Twiddler is something that Google can leverage to boost or demote rankings post-ranking, so after rankings are determined. Um, that could be for a number of reasons, right? So what I explained is that if, if there's a Twiddler in action with manual actions in the SERPs, we don't know if it's a filter or a Twiddler or whatever, but you can think of it that way. Um, well, Twiddler down because it is not working, right? Because all of these sites that have manual actions are ranking in AIOs, but they're being filtered from the traditional search results or heavily demoted. And by the way, de-indexing with manual actions doesn't necessarily mean that you're really de-indexed. It could work more like the removals tool in Google Search Console, where you're removed from the SERPs, not necessarily de-indexed. I have a tweet here explaining that and how to go and find this out. It's easy, just go into Google Search Console. And if you have the directory property set up, you can see what's indexed. Um, also, you can inspect URLs and see that they're indexed. So I just wanted to bring that up because a lot of people throw around, hey, I've been de-indexed. Uh, with a manual action. And, and sometimes that could be the case, right, where Google takes an action and de-indexes a site or a directory. But often it's just this heavily demoted piece, which is um, not necessarily all the pages being removed from the index. Um, okay, so let's hop into tracking AIOs in Google Search Console. Again, I mentioned I wrote a whole post about this on Search Engine Roundtable. I called it the maddening adventure of trying to track AIOs. 
So, and I th again, I think Google kind of wanted this, right? They don't want people to see that maybe there's a reduced click-through rate, reduced clicks when you're ranking in AIOs. Um, so it's very murky. Everything's combined in Google Search Console. Um, and Google has explained in the past publicly that um, people who use AI overviews are more satisfied with their results and they are seeing higher engagement from younger users when using AIOs. This is from Google, so this is not hard data that we have. Um, they also explain that links, in, links included in AIOs get more clicks than if the page appeared as a traditional cert. Again, a lot of, a lot of skeptical people, um, <laughs> SEOs especially, when they hear Google say something like that. So um, we really couldn't get AIO data until now. And the reason is because, again, if you have a manual action, all of that data, AIO data, if you're ranking for them, is sitting in Google Search Console, and it's not altered at all by rankings in the 10 blue links. It is what I call pure AIO data, right, which is very hard to come by. So if you have a manual action or you had one, you can go in today and check out click-through rate, clicks, everything, based upon AIOs without traditional rankings muddying the data, right? So very cool to do that. Okay, so let's hop into the steps needed to actually track AIOs in Google Search Console. Again, if you have a manual action, right? So fire up Google Search Console, access the performance reporting, then isolate the content that the manual action applied to. This is where a directory property comes in really handy. So if you had a subdomain or a directory, um, that was impacted by a manual action, you should definitely have those directories or subdomains set up as a property in Google Search Console. Then you don't have to worry about filtering for land by landing page. It's all for that directory or subdomain. Um, I have a whole post about that and I'll link to it um, in the show notes and it's also in my post here. So then once you do that, isolate the time frame after the manual action was applied. Right, so we want to see pure AIO data. Then check queries and position. This is a quick way to really see what was ranking in an AIO. Um, if you see queries like I showed before, and the ranking is one, right? Because again, the whole block of AIO, all listings in the block will rank number one. If you see that, that's probably a query where you are ranking in an AI overview. Um, so you could actually start to identify all those queries, filter them maybe document them, export them to Excel or Google Sheets. Then check the SERPs for AI overviews, right? So before you go crazy, go in, actually fire up incognito and logged in um, and start searching for those queries and see. If you're there, which you probably are, um, then that's good to know. And you can see where you're sitting in the AIO, at least as of today. Um, then jump back to Google Search Console and slice and dice the data, right? So this is where you can really dive in and see the difference in clicks and click-through rate and position as time went on, right? So below here, what I have is uh, I have two screenshots, one with isolating the time frame after the manual action was applied. So you could see average click-through rate uh, for these queries was 4.9%. Average ranking of 1.2. Again, it's going to be one because of the AIO block. And the previous time frame where this wasn't just AIOs, this was 10 blue links probably mixed with AIOs, uh, the average click-through rate was 2.7. So it almost doubled when everything is just in an AIO. But I'll cover more about that in a minute. That might sound great, but hold on. Um, and then the average position was 4.6. So this is the type of stuff that you could really start digging into, which is really cool. The other thing I said you could do is kind of zoom out time frame wise and see the change in average position and click-through rate as the AIOs took hold after the manual action was applied. So here you see a big jump in average position. Everything pretty much goes to one, of course, because everything else is filtered other than AIOs. And then the click-through rate, you could see a really nice spike there in click-through rate as well. So it's just very interesting to see that. Um, but you know, I brought up the doubling of click-through rate. But again, these are ranking number one. Right. So traditionally, if you had a featured snippet, you would see very high click through rates, sometimes 50, 60, 70 percent. You know, you often would see 15, 20 percent. Right. So these are all if you scan down this list, it's like 7 percent, 5 percent, 3 percent, 4 percent, 9 percent. It's OK. Don't get me wrong. And in aggregate, 
the site got a good amount of clicks, you know, almost the same amount of clicks as the previous time frame when everything was ranking in 10 blue links. But the point is like a number one ranking is at least based on the data I'm looking at is not yielding even close to the click through rate that it once did. So maybe Google saying all of the links together in an AIO, they're generating more clicks, maybe. Um, but it's not the same amount of clicks as you ranking number one or, at, you know, having the featured snippet. Um, the other thing, you know, before I end the post, I just wanted to say that if you don't have enough data per query, what you can do is take a bunch of these queries leading to a specific page. I would definitely organize it by page and use uh, regex in Google Search Console. So by using regular expressions, you can lump all these queries together leading to the page that we're yielding AIOs. Um, it will just give you more data. You'll have more clicks, uh, more impressions, uh, you know, better click through rate. Um, at least based upon the grouping of queries. It's not optimal. Really, you want to see one query and what it did before versus after. But if you have to group some of these together, it does give you more data. And I actually did that for uh, this specific site. So that's it. Definitely check out my post. It's super interesting. Again, it's pure AIO data, which is rare. The catch, of course, is you need a manual action, um, <laughs> which not everybody wants, obviously. And I'll end this episode with the final line from my post, which was, this may be one of the few times or only time a manual action will benefit a site owner, right? You'll have pure AIO data if you're ranking in AIOs, which is, again, super interesting. Um, I don't know how long Google will leave this loophole open. Um, I have a feeling that it may close pretty quickly. I don't know that for sure. Um, but Anyway, but the data is still there. So if you had a manual action for the past month or two, whatever it may be, uh, all of that data is sitting there. So you could actually dig in um, and that's it. So if you have any questions, you could ping me on X or LinkedIn or wherever on social and um, definitely subscribe to my channel again. I, I really appreciate that. Make sure you don't miss any future episodes and I appreciate you watching. And until the next time, I'll see you soon.